Heavens won't fall if IU resigns today, says Bode George. And we're not going back on the opposition to same faith ticket, says the Forum of Northern Christians. This is Post Politics. I am Mary Anacone. Former Deputy National Chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Chief Body George, on Thursday warned that the PDP risks losing the 2023 elections if its national chairman, Senator Yocha Ayu, fails to resign. The PDP leader, who noted that the heavens won't fall if Ayu resigns from office, insisted that the vote of confidence passed on the national chairman at the NEC meeting does not hold water. He warned that the party's presidential candidate, Alhaji Atiku Abubakar, not to take PDP leaders and members from the southern part of the country for granted, saying the party must do the needful now that anything else will be suicidal. Well, joining us to discuss this is Ose Aneni. He is the PDP chieftain. It's good to have you join us. Glad to be here. Great. Ose, I think you and I have had a conversation similar to this, of course, um, as a result of the Wike Atiku situation. But now I think this, this has gone past uh, the Wike Atiku situation. Now it seems to be a Southern Caucus, um, you know, problem. Um, I think uh, two, two days ago we had um, Atiku with the governor of your state and um, a conversation was being had. It seemed to those of us who were watching that um, your presidential candidate does not have a problem per se with the idea of the chairman being seen out of the party but then he had um, a certain caveat as to when he should be stepping out of the party. But I want to call for that video. Let's take a look at what the um, Oyo State Governor had to say about this, and then we'll start the conversation. He's asking that the National Working Committee of PDP should be restructured such that what you have in the face of Nigerians right now, which is our candidate is from the Northeast, the PDP national chairman is from the North Central. What was floated a few days back, where they said my brother, Governor Aminu Tambua, is the DG of the campaign is from the northwest. Maybe that has happened, maybe it has not happened, but he has the quality and the capacity to be the DG of this campaign. There's no doubt about that. But we must resolve the issue of what we have in the face of Nigeria by asking the national chairman to step down so that PDP in the southern part of the country will feel included in the top hierarchy of PDP. PDP has developed a constitution, electoral processes, zoning of offices, power sharing, talk about everything which will bring about the unity of the party and the unity of the country. I have no problem from wherever any member of the party comes from, but, but it must be done in accordance with our constitution, our regulations, and our practices. What Governor Shei is calling for is achievable under our constitution, under our conventions, under our rules, under our regulations, and under our procedures. So those So Governor Shea Makinde made his position and then of course Atiku Abubakai saying this has to be done 
the right way in accordance to, of course, the constitution of the party. So I ask you as a party member, what exactly do you think that the presidential candidate was referring to? Is that um, the PDP constitution has sort of put fail safes um, into, into it. So if, say, for instance, the chairman were from the Southeast and he were to resign or be unable to continue carrying out his, his duties as chairman, it would fall to the deputy chairman from the South to take over his position. Um, so um, Chairman Ayu is from the North Central. Even if he were to step down, we have a deputy chairman North, um, Honorable Damagun, I think his name is, um, who would then automatically by our constitution become our chairman. So in essence, what, what um, she, Governor Shea Makinde is asking for is not just for IU to step down, it's also for um, the Deputy National Chairman South to step down. And then um, Honorable Arapaja, um, who is now the Deputy Ch um, National Chairman South, would then automatically become the acting chairman of the party. So you can see it's a very convoluted, complicated process. It's not as simple as asking IU to step down. We have barely 12 days from the start of campaigns. And yes, um, Waziri um, Atiku did say it's achievable, it's possible. But when he puts the caveat about um, in accordance with the constitution, therein lies the problem. Are we going to have a mid an emergency constitution 12 days before the start of primaries? I don't think it's possible. Um, whilst I do concede the fact that um, it, it may appear on the face of it that you know the, the PDP is top heavy, leaning towards the north. Uh, candidate comes from the north. A national chairman comes from the north central. Um, there really isn't, to my mind, um, any window I think left for us to hold the convention and get um, and restructure the party as Governor Shea Mackinde has asked us to do. And what has happened in the past typically is when a, when a pre president elect emerges, then you then have the time between uh, the emergence of president elect and the swearing in of that president elect. You then have time to sort of like restructure the party. I think it's it's dangerous to attempt to restructure the entire party just to have this start of campaigns. Um. I mean, I also remember you saying this the last time we spoke, and I'm thinking it's been weeks from then till now. Uh, if the party was really indeed um, interested in making sure that they calm all the frayed nerves, could that not have been a consideration? I mean, of course, it's a, according to you, a tad bit late, but would the party also want to risk winning the elections? Because again, I want to quote Chief Body Judge. He's saying that the PDP may risk losing the 2023 elections if IU fails to resign. And that must be something that really runs deep, you know, in the party. I'm not a member of the PDP, but I'd like to know, does it mean that the party might lose the elections because of IU? How serious is this? Um, I wish I could, I could dismiss it as um, idle talk. It's not, it's not idle talk. The, the people speaking about um, are you stepping down as serious, um, very influential, political figures within the PDP. We're talking about Governor Wiki, we're talking about Chief Bode George, we're talking about Governor Shea Mackinde, and they have been very clear about what they're requesting. And I think the concern is not just their clarity in their request, but the, the clarity in the consequences that they are warning of, that if this isn't done, then the party may well lose the 2023 elections. Personally, I think it fails, it falls on um, the chairman to, um, take a decision on whether he want, he feels um, his seat is more important than maybe the party winning the elections. Um, he didn't say, you know, he's been misquoted as saying that, you know, if a candidate from the North emerges, he will step down. Um, he didn't actually say that. He said if a candidate from the North emerges and the party asks him to step down, then he would. Um, since the last time we spoke, the party's national executive um, Com uh, committee has met and actually given a vote of confidence um, on the continued tenure of um, the chairman. I, you know, so the party party is backing him 100%. As you might be aware, just yesterday the PDP had released its presidential campaign council. So it seems that at this point the party is moving forward um, and they're just getting ready for um, 
for the start of campaigns and the elections proper. Um, I would urge maybe from the, you know, and, and, I, and I don't want to dismiss the concerns that Chibode Jot has raised. For instance, if you look at the party, um, you know, we have in the Southwest a presidential candidate in the APC. Um, his argument is that he wants to be able to go into the Southwest and show the face of the PDP represented in the leadership of the Southwest. That currently really isn't um, happening. Even though our National Publicity Secretary from the Southwest is not a top tier position, so to speak, in the leadership cadre of the party. Um, but, you know, it, it, like I said, it's a fine balancing act. Do you um, risk, you know, sabotaging or torpedoing the entire party just because you want to um, assuage the feelings of just one political geopolitical zone? Or would you urge, I think, restraint um, and say, campaigns are going to be four months, elections come up in February, once elections are concluded, then everything that the Southeast and the Southern Caucasus is asking for can be achieved. Can we also uh, um, say that the Southern Caucasus is just one you know, region in the party? I'm asking because um, there seems to be that there had been that clarion call for party leadership to make sure that whatever candidates was being fielded should be from the South, even though um, the PDP ended up with an Atiku Abubakar. Do you not think that they have a legitimate stake here, whether they be one region or not? Do you feel that they need to um, you know, air their thoughts, whether they be aggrieved or not, or asking for something that's legitimate or maybe just sentimental? I think it's, it's both. I think it's legitimate and I think it is also sentimental. And I think it's a valid conversation to be had. I think maybe where I draw the line is when in the pursuit of this or the, the resolution of these um, issues, um, you threaten uh, the party's electoral successes. Um, I, I want us to, to pull back a little bit from personal or even regional um, grievances and look at the national condition. We are in dire straits as a country. We've never had unemployment this high. Um, inflation, we, ha we hit record highs, I think a couple of days ago, of more than 20%. Um, insecurity is rife in every geopolitical zone of the country. Uh, we right now are earning less than we're using to service our debt. The country is, is, is technically bankrupt. And I think sometimes, you know, I come on, on shows like this sometimes to maybe remind our leaders that the issues at stake here are more than some of the partisan considerations um, that we might be put into the fore. Um, and I would always urge that regardless of whatever differences uh, we might be expressing, and uh, which I do encourage, we should never lose sight of the fact that ultimately we need to come together as a united party, as a united opposition, uh, to take back power from the failing APC. How do you come together as a united party without dealing with these divisions within the party? I'd like to go back to something that uh, uh, Chief Badejad said. He said, uh, how will Southern um, PDP leaders convince their electorates to vote for our candidate when there is no substantial national position in the Southwest? He again goes on to say, have we thrown our integrity to the dogs? Um, he also said that unless we're united, unless we have fairness, equity, justice in our system, the party and the country is heading nowhere. So if you're asking for people to come together and then there is a huge elephant in the room that's um, somewhat just not being addressed as it should be, where is the oneness and the working together to make sure that you win the elections? I'm sorry, I know that you're not I, I, I know that you're not the party chairman, but I mean you're the man here, so you have to answer the questions. I know, of course, of course, that's fine. I so so I always encourage conversations and just from you know the ebb and flow of this this conversation or the or the attempts to resolve this, you've seen the BOT chairman step down. He was from the north. His office is now occupied by Senator Wabara from the southeast. Um, Governor Shea Makinde has emerged as the, I think, the deputy um, director general of the campaign. So the South is represented in the um, campaign council. Uh, Governor Udom is currently the chairman of the presidential campaign council. So there are attempts to um, to resolve this this problem, and I and I I'm, I'm I am aware that there are limits to what you know the candidate can do. He cannot force um, Ayu to to step down. Um, it would it would spark a, a, an entirely different constitutional crisis and would tie us up in court, like it did with previous chairman we had, who we tried to force out 
like we did it happened with Secondos, like it happened with our Modi Sharif uh, before him. Um, you know, and, and, I, and I think we, we need to learn from our history as a party. I spoke about the constitutional provision that says if the chairman steps down, the, um, the deputy from that same region replaces him. That came from uh, previous experiences where one chairman would step down and then a chairman from another region would, would occupy his office. Um, and, and that was sort of like an attempt to address that, that problem, that attempt of um, that imbalance. Um, so we sort of are hamstrung by our constitution. Uh, we cannot, like I said, afford to go into this um, election season tied up in litigation. Um, the candidate has said he's open to the idea of, are you stepping down? But it has to be um, done constitutionally. And I think ultimately, you know, it then lies with not just Ayub, but maybe on Damagun to say, look, in the interest of peace, progress, but, um, and unity for our party, are we willing to, both of us, but both of them have to step down. Both of us step down so a southern or a southwestern chairman can emerge. Um, in, in the remaining, in, in remaining t in 12 days, I think that's the only window we have. Um, there really is no other way. The candidate cannot force the chairman to step down. Um, but it, sometimes you sh I, I, I personally think you should read the room. If everybody's clamoring for one thing, if the candidate himself is saying he's open to this being done, um, if I were in the chairman's shoes, I, I would take the path of honor and step down. Well, well, let's try to turn the tables here. If, if your presidential candidate were in the shoes of the chairman, um, would he do same? And, and, and many have also queried that, is he doing everything to make sure that he just wins as opposed to making sure that there is some legalities followed within the party. Again, uh, going back to the situation between um, Wike uh, and Atiku Abubakar, um, how well do you think he's handled that situation uh, from a presidential candidate's pos uh, position? I think he, he sort of was stung by what happened in 2019, where he made a lot of uni unilateral decisions, one of which was um, Picking Peter B, Governor Peter B, then who became his running mate in 2019, and you sort of have seen um, a different approach this time around. Everything he has done has been in consultation with party leaders and the party's leadership, um, and sometimes it has slowed down um, the process. I think I, I think if I have any criticism, it's it's just how slowly things have moved, simply because um, the candidate the candidate has insisted this time on being as consultative as possible. Um, I probably would have handled the WK situation slightly differently. Um, I, I, I'm from the South myself, and I understand the grievance, grievances he has expressed. Uh, you know, but to be fair, many of us ran for primaries and many of us lost. I ran for the House of Reps, um, I lost. Uh, it could have been so easy to you know, throw my dummy out of the pram and start um, um, start agitating. Um, but, you know, I, I always ask people to remember why we're in politics. It's not just to acquire power, it's, not, it's to serve. And if that's foremost in our mind, then I think everybody should be doing everything they can do. Um, whether it's a candidate, whether it's WK, whether it's a Southern Caucus, whether it's a chairman, we should be doing everything we can do to make sure we get... Um, the APC out of power in 2023. Let's talk about your candidates a bit more. Um, recently, the NOI put out a poll um, about the frontline um, presidential candidates, and um, there were reactions from all sides. Uh, we see that the Labour Party's candidate uh, is in the lead for that poll, and, and we've seen many candidates, including your party's candidate, shoot down that poll. Um, what's your What's your take on that? I'd like to hear, because seven, several people have said that, oh, they're fake polls, but these are polls that we normally carry out, um, you know, at this time of the elections. Is, was that just a political statement, or should the Peter B phenomenon be a case for many political parties like yours to worry about? Um, so I'm a pollster myself. I have a polling company. Um, and it would be dishonest of me to come up here and say that NOI who conducted the polls, uh, NOI polls are, um, would conduct a poll that wasn't, wasn't uh, valid. They literally are the best polling company within the country. 
Um, however, because I'm a poster, you know, I was able to look at the the report um, put out by Anna Foundation, and there were some very very glaring flaws. First of all, this clearly was a popularity poll. It wasn't a poll of the voters register, so it was it was it was more like a poll of what do you think and who would you vote if you were able to vote. Um, the second thing was that it seemed to have been made or or um, sampled from a an urban population. You know, I poll myself, and I know that the awareness of the candidates in rural areas, whether it's Tinubu, Atiku, or Peter Abi or Kwankwa, so never reaches the heights you saw in the poll of 95, 97, uh, 96. So it suggests that this was selected polls in urban areas. We aren't aware of the um, polling size, so I can't, as a poster, say whether it's statistically significant. I'm going to give anyone the benefit of the doubt because they wouldn't, I think, put out a poll otherwise if it wasn't statistically significant. Um, but there are issues about it. You know, Again, you have a huge amount of people who didn't respond. Either they, they said they were undecided um, or they just flat out refused to respond. And in every geopolitical zone but the Southeast, um, the number of undecideds that refused to comment dwarfed the numbers of people who voted or you know, expressed an opinion for either of, the, or in either of the candidates. So it sort of, it sort of makes all the polls in every um, geopolitical zone um, irrelevant because you know, the margin of error is too large because you have undecideds and people who refuse to vote. Um, but I will say, interestingly enough, in the Southeast, uh, Peter Abi scored, unsurprisingly, I think about 68% of the votes. Um, that, that dwarfed the no amount of people who um, said they were undecided or refused to comment. So the, poll, the only thing the poll showed clearly was that in, in the Southeast, in urban areas, Peter Abi is very, very popular. Mm, interesting. But to, to you as a party man, and of course, members of your party and your presidential candidate, um, how perturbed or not uh, are members of your party about the Peter B phenomenon? Um, he's, a, he's a very serious candidate. Um, he's a very, very serious candidate. I think um, a lot of us dismissed him as an online uh, sensation when he left the party very early. Um, we study you know, the, the, the democracies and elections across the world, and I, I, I actually haven't seen anybody move so quickly. I think he joined Labour in in June or so, and in three months he has, you know, if if you take the words of the NY poll, he has secured the geopolitical zone. Uh, you haven't seen that type of mobilisation um, in Nigerian history ever. So what he has managed to achieve is is very very significant. Um, you also have seen an uptick in in an awakening of young people and their engagement in the democratic process, whether it's for the advocacy to go out and get their PVCs or it's in the campaigns and the rallies they've been organizing by themselves. And I think that's brilliant for our democracy. Um, most democracies actually see a reverse. You see young people stay away from the process. In Nigeria, we are seeing young people ad adopt and embrace it. So he had done many, many good things. Um, I don't see a route to victory for him still. I think he will do probably well in the southeast and the south south, um, and therein lies the problem. You know, I, I I spoke about a united party. I also spoke about a united opposition. Um, most of the people who are supporting Peter B would tradition traditionally have supported the PDP if it was a two horse race. Um, and, and what we sort of are seeing is Peter B is dividing the opposition vote. So Atiku will get a large chunk. Peter Abiy will get a significant or smaller chunk. Um, I, I worry that um, the votes that Peter Abiy will, will get may prevent Atiku from winning the presidential um, election in 2023. So I, I hope um, as campaigns wind down in December, January, opposition parties will come together like they, like they did in 2019 okay. and um, find a way to you know, to make this work. Atiku has promised to run a government of national unity, so there will be space for Obi and his campaign within government if we win. I'm hoping to see a government, I'm hoping to see an, a united opposition campaign together to get rid of the APC. 
Okay. Well, I want to say thank you. Uh, Ose Aneni is a PDP chieftain. Always a, a pleasure to have you join us on the show. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you.